Okay, gentlemen, section 8.3, graphs of exponential functions. Guys, we've been talking, we've talked about graphs of linear functions, okay, and that's when uh, x is being multiplied by something like y equals 2x or something like that. But since in this unit we're talking about exponents, we're actually going to talk about an exponential function, okay, and that's when the, the variable x is actually an exponent, okay. Now, when we were doing linear equations, I taught you three different ways to graph it. I taught you how to use a table of values. I taught you how to use the intercepts method. And I also taught you how to uh, use the slope intercept form or, or the function form, y equals mx plus b. Now, in this one, um, I'm only going to teach you one way to do this, and that is just a table of values. And a table of, value works, table of values works for any function. I can always plug in x's and get y's. Um, there are an infinite number of x's, most of the time, infinite number of x's that I can plug in and I'll get y, uh, the y's and I plot the points and connect them. Okay, So let's see what happens here um, with y equals 3 to the x. Okay, So I'm going to put my variables here, my x and y. I'm, I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And guys, I'm, I'm using more than just 1 or 2 because I know with linear functions it's just a straight line. Um, but with an exponential function, this thing curves and moves. So I need several points to kind of give myself an idea of what it looks like. Okay, now if I plug in negative 2, I'm going to get y is equal 3 to the negative 2. So that means that y is equal to 1 over 3 squared, which means that y is equal to 1 over 9. Okay, so 1 ninth. If I do y is equal to 3 to the negative 1, I plug in negative 1, then I'm going to get y is equal to 1 over 3 to the first, because I had to move it to the bottom, just like on the last one, and then 1 over 3. Okay, so if x is negative 1, if I plug in negative 1, I get y is 1 third. y is equal to 3 to the 0. Well, that's just 1. We know that. Anything to the 0 is 1, except 0, of course. Now, I'm not going to do the others because I can just think about this. If I plug in 1, then that's 3 to the first. That means that this is going to be 3. y equals 3 squared, that would be 9. y equals 3 to the third, that's 27. Oh, 27. Okay, so I've got some points here, and I'm going to scroll down a bit so I can plot these points. Okay, and let's see. Let's see what this thing looks like. So at negative 2, y is 1 ninth. Okay, so that, I mean, that's right here. That's kind of tiny. All right, when x is negative 1, y is 1 third. Okay, 1 third. When x is 0, y is 1. Okay, so right there. If x is 1, then y is 3, okay. If x is 2, y is 9, so that's going to be way up here. I'm not even going to be able to put the 27. I mean, I don't, it's way up there, okay. Now, if I connect these points, it looks like this, okay. Man, that thing's flying up there. And then it looks like this is going to get smaller, right, because every time I use a bigger negative exponent or an exponent with a larger absolute value that means that I'm gonna to have to put it on the bottom make a fraction and it's gonna be one over something huge so it gets closer and closer to zero um, but let's think about that for a minute that's something that we need to discuss does this thing ever equal zero is there an X is there something I can plug into the X here so that this whole value equals zero no there's no exponent that's gonna make three equal zero is there an exponent that's going to make it negative? No, it's not going to change the sign. It may make it terribly small because if the exponent's negative, I put it in the denominator, right? But it's it's just going to get smaller and smaller. It's not going to get it's not going to equal 0. It's not going to be negative, okay? So that's some that's some interesting points, but we just use a table of values, plot the points, draw the graph, all right? And over every unit, it's getting bigger and bigger. The increase is more over each change, all right, whereas a line changes the same amount every time. Uh, that We call that the slope, right? An exponential function changes more each unit, okay? All right, good job, guys. Let's see how we can uh, work with this in some examples.